welcome back again to another Java short tutorial. In my previous tutorial, I've shown how to create a basic application in uh, using the Java Swing library with a flow layout. In this tutorial, I'm going to extend on that and show you how to build a GUI with a slightly different layout manager, namely, instead of the flow layout, the grid layout. So for that, I'm going to copy my previous example first. And I'm going to name it Swing Example 2. And why am I copying it? Because there's certain things I don't want to uh, redo from scratch. Um, for example, I still want to use these controls, even though I want to add on to it. Um, but yes, yeah, some other things I'm going to change. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, decorated default look and feel. Um, I'm going to name this Swing Example 2, Grid Layout, and I'm going to use a slightly different size, so let's say 250 by 150. I still want my default close operation uh, to be exit on close. I don't want to use this flow layout anymore, and I do want to use these labels and text fields. Uh, I'll re-add them to my J-frame in a moment. Okay, so this is a good starting point. So I have a label for name and a text field for name. And I'm going to add another label, uh, JLBLH, and another text field, JTFH. I'm going to leave my button as this. So just to ensure that these also get initialized. I'm going to say, OK, uh, this dot uh, LBLH equals new J label H and sorry, JTF H equals new J text field. OK, then the add button remains the same. OK, let's now look at this new layout manager. So I'm going to say this dot set layout, and instead of using a flow layout, I'm going to use a grid layout. And in the grid layout, after we import it, we need to define what our grid is going to look like in a way our table. So in this case, I want this grid or table to have three rows and two columns. Okay, so therefore three comma two. Um, and basically, uh, once you have established your grid layout, you can start adding your controls to the grid. And when you're adding your controls, you're basically adding them from top to bottom, from left to right. Meaning, the first control to be added will be in the first column on the first row. The second control to be added will be on the second column on the first row. And the control after that will be in the first column of the second row. Okay, so let's add it. This dot uh, J label name. This dot JTF name. So I want my name, label, and text field next to each other. Then on the second row, I want to have my J label H and my text field H. And lastly, on the third row, first column, I want to have my add button. So now let's run this. OK, so there you have it. So we have our uh, grid layout with indeed uh, the first control, second control, third control, fourth control, fifth control, which is the button in this case. So. Yeah, nicely organized as a grid of two columns and three rows. Okay, and before moving on, uh, I would like to demonstrate one more thing. So say if I add another label for city and another field, text field, for, uh, for city as well. And I'm going to nicely initialize these. So JLBL city equals new J label.
and I want to add them to my layout as well, so I want to have them below H, but above the button. Okay, so I'm going to add them, JLBL City. And JTF City next to there, and then the button. Let's see what will happen. And you can see my layout got completely messed up, so why is that? Because... I've defined my grid to have three rows and two columns. In other words, I have space for six controls. In this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven controls, which is one too many. So how does Swing deal with that? Well, basically, it resizes the grid, in this case, by adding an extra column. But that pretty much messes up my layout. So in this case, I have all well, first control, second control, third control, fourth control, fifth control, sixth control, seventh control not the way I want it. Okay, so let's correct this by simply adding a additional row and maintaining two columns. So now there should be space for eight controls. So now if I run this, everything looks properly again. Okay, that's pretty much it. Well, one more thing for the grid control. Um, you can basically indicate spacing between controls. So let's look at the auto-completion. So basically, first you define the rows, then the columns, then the horizontal gap between controls, so in this case 10 pixels, and then the vertical gap between rows of controls, so in this case it's 20 pixels. So now if I run this, you will see the same layout again, which has been severely resized. So just to make it look more properly, I better increase the size of my J-frame. Okay, so there we go. So now we have, well, even though it's hard to see, 10 pixel space between two controls and 20 pixels between every row. Okay, let's make this a little bit smaller just to prove this indeed works. So there you have it, now it's 5 pixels and because I made my J frame bigger, the text fields became bigger, so grid layout has a tendency of maximizing the size of every control. But anyway, it should be clear how a grid layout works and that the fact that you can add spacing between controls. So there you have it, your 10 pixels and 5 pixels here. Okay, and that's pretty much all there is to know about the grid layout. So see you next time. Mm -hmm.